Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about something called stoichiometry. What stoichiometry is, is it's a way to do calculations about chemical reactions, about things that you can measure, and then make predictions about what uh, will be produced in a reaction. So every stoichiometry problem is going to be giving you information on one substance that participates in a reaction, whether it's a reactant or product, and it will be asking you about another substance in the reaction. It might be a reactant or product, depending on the wording. And so you're, you've got a given substance, something you have information given to you on, and a desired substance, the thing that the information is desired about. So step one, well step zero really is, if you don't have a balanced chemical equation for the reaction, to write one, to develop one. So step one, once you have a balanced chemical equation, is to take the given substance, whatever units it's in, it might be grams or it might be liters if it's a gas. You're going to convert that substance into moles so step one is to convert the units of your given substance into moles. If the units that you're starting with for that given substance are grams, you're going to be using the molar mass of that substance to convert it to moles. If the starting units are liters, because it's a gas, you're going to need to assume that it's at standard temperature and pressure, and you're going to be using the conversion factor where one mole equals 22.4 liters for a gas that is at standard temperature and pressure. Now that you've got moles of your given substance, you're going to convert that into moles of your desired substance. And the way you're going to do that will be using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. And those are ratios between moles of substances in the reaction. The last step to a stoichiometry problem is to, now that you have moles of your desired substance, would be to convert it into the desired units that are being asked for in the problem. And again, if it's asking you for grams of that substance, then you would use its molar mass to convert from moles of it to grams. If it's asking for liters of that substance because it's a gas, you need to assume that it's at standard temperature and pressure and again, use the molar volume of a gas where one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters. We'll look at how this goes through a couple of examples. So an example of a problem that can be solved using stoichiometry might be something like if five grams of steel wool are allowed to rust completely, how much rust is produced. How many grams of rust are produced? And the things that you need to know, steel wool is almost all composed of solid iron, that when something rusts, it's reacting with oxygen gas in the air, and that when iron turns into rust, the thing that is produced, the rust, is iron 3 oxide. Now, like I said before, step zero really is to write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Iron, Fe, it's solid because it's steel wool. Oxygen is one of the diatomic molecules of an element, and so it is always O2. Other things like chlorine, hydrogen, fluorine, iodine, all need a two when they are just molecules. The formula for iron three oxide, 
I knew it because the charge of the iron was three, three plus, and the charge on oxide is two minus when you look at a chart of charges. And so for those charges to balance, there need to be two irons and three oxygens. This equation, however, is not balanced. It needs coefficients. And the coefficients for this are as follows. And so now balanced says four moles of iron react with three moles of oxygen gas to produce two moles of iron three oxide. And now I'm gonna get myself organized by taking the substance that we have information about and writing that amount underneath the substance it's referring to in the balanced chemical equation. Then I'm going to put a question mark under the substance that we need to find information about. It helps us get organized. And now step one is to convert the amount of your given substance into moles of the given substance. For that conversion, we put what we're trying to get to, moles, on the top of the conversion factor, and on the bottom, the units that we're getting rid of, grams of iron, and the number that goes in for moles and grams to make those two things equal is the molar mass, and this was just from the periodic table for iron. And with correct significant figures, 5.00 times one divided by 55.85 gives us 0 0.0895 moles of iron. Step two is to convert moles of iron, moles of our given substance, into moles of our desired substance using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation as the numbers in our conversion factor. It's important to not get sloppy when you're writing your units because just writing moles for this and not writing that it's moles of iron would make it not as obvious which coefficient would go on the top or the bottom. But seeing that we have moles of iron, we know that moles of iron go on the bottom. And knowing and writing that we want moles of iron three oxide means that that should go on the top. And therefore we would have the two coefficient on the top and the four coefficient on the bottom. Getting sloppy with not writing units, you might have flip-flopped them. Finally, step three, so we're going to take now our moles of our desired substance and convert it into whatever units are being asked for. So grams in this case, and that's gonna be using the molar mass, but not this molar mass, the molar mass of this substance with two irons and three oxygens. This is the molar mass of iron three oxide. It's two iron and three oxygen added together. So this is our final answer. It's an answer to the question, if you had five grams of steel wool and you let it completely rust, it would become 7.15 grams of rust of iron three oxide. We'll look at an example now that has to deal with gas volumes. This is a reaction we did a couple of weeks ago with potassium chlorate being heated with a catalyst and it became potassium chloride and gave off oxygen gas. So the question is, 
if 7.92 grams of potassium chlorate are decomposed in that way, what volume in liters of oxygen gas would be produced? This can be answered using stoichiometry. Step zero is to write a balanced chemical equation because none is given. Potassium has a one plus charge. Chlorate is ClO3 with a one minus, and so that is its correct formula. MnO2, though not mentioned in the problem, recall that it, that was our catalyst we used. We melted it so it was liquid. KCl is the formula for potassium chloride with a one plus charge and a one minus charge. They neutralize each other. And oxygen gas, again, oxygen being a diatomic element, its formula is O2. Now this is not balanced and so coefficients need to go in to balance it. Now we have a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. We can get to step one, which is to convert the given substance into moles. Now what I'm going to do is show you how you can set up all three steps in one line before you do your calculations. So this is step one, just like here. But I'm not going to calculate it and put an answer yet. Instead, I'm going to do another time sign and a line for step two, and then another time sign and a line for step three. This was the molar mass of KClO3. I added in one potassium, one chlorine, and three oxygens to get it. Step two, we did it before, was converting moles of our given substance into moles of our desired substance. Here, grams would cancel out and our units would have been moles of KClO3. And I'm going to cancel those out by putting moles of KClO3 on the bottom. Moles of oxygen gas, what we're trying to get to, will go on the top. And the numbers that go in are from the balanced chemical equation. Now, if we stopped here, we would only get moles of oxygen for an answer, but it's asking what volume, and so liters are implied. And so the step three is to convert into the desired units. So the numbers that make moles and liters equal to each other for any gas, as long as it is at standard temperature and pressure, it, the numbers are one and 22.4. And in this step, moles of O2 cancel out. To now calculate this, it would be 7.92 times all of these things on the top and dividing by all of these things on the bottom. And you can do them in whatever order, so long as you're making sure to multiply and divide correctly. And after doing those three steps, we get that our answer is that 2.17 liters of oxygen gas should be produced when you decompose 7.92 grams of potassium chlorate. All right, so I hope that all was clear enough. Otherwise, if it wasn't, then come to class with your questions and we can get those answered and look at some more examples if you feel like you need it. I'll see you then.